So, uh, hello, Phillips Stadium. Nice to see all 35,000 of you. Um, yeah, my talk is strategic data handling um, or how to decrease time to ROI. Uh, you can thank ChatGPT for that title. Um, so, the motivation here is, you know, in my role, um, time to ROI is much more important than fully optimized code or you know, fully tested code, right? If uh, I would be accused of wasting time if I were spending too much time doing those things. Um, so when I previously worked in Python, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of options to speed things up. Just kind of use some general heuristics like use pandas and numpy when you can because I'm going to get you know C under the hood basically or C++ or something like that, right? Um, and but Julia, you know, has the option for you know writing base Julia. It's already fast, so I can always consider rewriting something that I think is too slow in in base Julia as opposed to data frames .jl, um, and potentially get some speed ups there. So the question is kind of how do I strike the right balance between um, spending time on improving the code and testing the code uh, versus actually you know getting towards my my real business value goals. Um, so I have three tips for you today. Uh, let's see. Uh, the first one is to you know use Julia base types if it's necessary. If it's not, don't. Um, be empirical about which function is best. So you don't always need to know ahead of time or be able to understand why it's faster. Just go with what's fast. Um, and if there's some critical piece of logic that you think might fail or might not work properly, you know test that. But you don't need to necessarily test everything in your code. Right? That takes time. Um, so the first one, uh, I'd like to basically, you know, m remind me that data frames is, is really fast in a lot of instances, and it's getting faster all the time. It's it's harder and harder to contrive examples where it's not uh, as fast or faster than just writing it in base Julia. Um, and so I want to consider these two functions here, um, which both implement a cumulative sum. You don't need to do this. This is already implemented elsewhere. Just an example, right? Um, it's roughly the same. So I pre-allocate some uh, a vector, uh, and then I iterate through it, and I create that sum, and I return the result, right? Uh, the main difference is on the first function, the top one there, we're passing in you know a vector int, and on the second one, we're passing in just a data frame and, and the column to tell which um, you know a symbol to tell which column. So, uh, but what I can see here right away is that in the top function, uh, the, the compiler know, or Julia knows at compile time what the types are going to be. So it can do a lot of specialization there and speed things up for us uh, at runtime. Um, for the other one, there's no way for the compiler to know what the type is going to be, right? We're just passing in a data frame, and every time it iterates through this, it has to then check and then do some dispatch. That's all expensive. Um, so when you're iterating through this a bunch of times in, in a for loop, uh, that's going to add up and be quite slow. Um, so apologies for the kind of ugly looking slide here. Quarto is a, a love-hate thing for me. Um, but the what you can see here is that eh, it's gotten a little slower actually, but you know, roughly 100x improve, it change um, when we look at the mean here for the function in base Julia versus uh, calling it on that data frames thing. So that's something that you can feel at the human level uh, time scale, right? If this was eight milliseconds versus 16 milliseconds, I might not care as much because refactoring that code and testing it could possibly, you know, I spend more time doing that than I wasted just running this. Um, so, the yeah, the second tip is to be empirical, right? Uh, if there's if there's a part of your code that you know is a, kind of a bottleneck, um, address that part and and address it in a way that is just running the benchmarks as opposed to trying to figure out what's going on. So if we look at these three functions. Um, I could try to think about why one of these might be faster than another, but that takes time, uh, and I could easily be wrong about it. So again, roughly implementing the same thing, just slight variations. Uh, the first one, I can tell, is probably going to be slow, right? We're instantiating a, a data frame, and then we're vcatting a bunch of um, data frames to it. Uh, that, sh that should be df. But um, so that you know it's a mutable object it's you can change types on the on any of those things it's an expensive operation i expect that one to be slow but these two i couldn't really tell you you know may, maybe the first one is faster maybe the second one is faster you know the second one is just uh, tables pushing all the tables into an array and then vcatting them and then turning it into a data frame at the, at the very last step 
The other one is creating a bunch of data frames and vcatting them at the last step. Um, so I don't really know. I don't really want to think about it. I just want to run the benchmarks and see. So the first one, yeah, 32 seconds. We could tell that one was going to be slow. Um, but the second one, 1.3, and the third one, 3.9, right? So it ended up being faster to uh, create a bunch of data frames, an array of data frames, and then just vcat them. I might not have guessed that. Um, and we could ask, why do we get these results? We could start analyzing that. We could run a bunch of benchmarks at different sizes and, and see how the function uh, changes over you know, the, the size of the input. Um, but we're wasting time. This is not getting us towards that um, return on investment. And so why do it? Uh, yeah, and then the, the third and final tip is it's, it's much easier to test on base Julia uh, functions than it is on you know, something that's written on a data frame. Um, so data frames, again, really great for rapid development. I use them every day. Um, I'll write these long kind of chains of, of data frame operations. And you know, from that, kind of have some pre-processing pipeline. Um, but occasionally, I'm doing something in there that might be uh, kind of brittle, or I don't know for sure that I, it's going to work every time. And so I want some guarantees about that. Uh, but I'm not going to test all of it. I'm just going to test the parts that I'm kind of concerned about. So if you look at this code, uh, what you see is, and the first pre-processing one, uh, you know, we're selecting and then we're transforming. We're making, you know, we're squaring this a value, and then we're applying this regex cleaning here. Um, this is really the only line that I'm worried about, right? Like I know a value times itself is going to be the square. I know that these other things generally work because that's just well-tested uh, data frames code. Um, so what I would rather do is replace this line with a function that operates on a string. Um, and now I can test that individual function and be more confident that, yes, this does do uh, what I think it does. So this one, you know, it's supposed to remove leading zeros, right, in this example. Uh, but maybe it, maybe it doesn't work in every instance, right? So I want some guarantees. Um, so I've wrapped that critical logic. And then here we can look at, like, the examples of testing, right? So the first one, it's just so much easier to test this. All I did was call the function. I put in a test, and I put in the value. It's very easy to reason about. The second one, um, it's kind of annoying, right? So I don't really care about the A values. That's not what I'm testing. I don't care about the C values, but I still have to create a data frame with all those things in them. I still have to run that larger uh, uh, process and then actually test those values at the end. So this can get really unwieldy as, as you start dealing with more realistic uh, data processing pipelines. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thanks. Any question? If not, then I have a question. Oh, yeah, yeah you have. My uh, question is, um, can you tell us something about LexisNexis? What is this <laughs> ROI, ROI you are talking about? Uh, oh, sorry, return on investment. Yeah, right? I so, know. But so so I'm, uh, right, so LexisNexis is a um, legal software company. We make a lot of software for lawyers and so on. Um, so, but really in my role, like it's very dollar focused, right? So the things that I'm doing have to be making the business money. Um, and so it's really about like how quickly can I iterate, how quickly can I produce things that can, can have like that bottom line impact. Um, it's not necessarily about having the, the absolute fastest code all the time, right? Well, those are things that we can think about and, and improve later on in the process if we, if we go into production and all that. But, you know, really it's, it's just get to the finish line um, with something that's good enough that doesn't slow you down as the human, right? Right, cool. so you, you give us some tips about how to speed code up. Uh, I'm just wondering, like, is it generally true that you want to write functions instead of directly manipulating your data frame? Yeah, functions will, will typically give you a speed up. Um, and that's because you were specified the data type? I exactly, right. Mm -hmm. So you, really what it's about is so the, comp the compiler can make good inferences about what types it's operating on. If it can't, that's going to be expensive. So. Okay. All right, thank you.